We're at Lake Kiwi in the western part of South Carolina. We're at that fall to summer transition. We're starting to get those colder nights. It was really cold last night, 46 degrees. Got a lot of fog this morning, but dead slick calm and high sun. So that's gonna be a really good day. We're gonna be chasing herring fish. I think we're gonna have a really fun time out there on Lake Kiwi. I've never been here before. I just got done practicing on Lake Hartwell and the fishing is fantastic there right now. I have a feeling today is gonna be a good day. Let's get out there and see what we do. Not a bass, not a bass right there. That's where they're at. Now watch this. Check that out, guys. Wow. Four pound line, guys. <laughs> nice spot of bass. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, we're here at Lake Kiwi. And I just, I'm gonna tell you one thing, guys. I really love catching spotted bass. And this place has an abundance of spots. But one other thing it really has is big, large mouth bass. So if you get around this area, and let's just say, for instance, you're around that that Columbia area and you want to fish something that maybe isn't getting near the pressure as like a Hartwell or Lake Murray, you should come out here to Lake Kiwi. It has a good abundance of fish. You can catch them fairly easy. Now granted, I picked up my four pound line rod because I just really wanted to see if I could catch one on it. But you can get away with seven, eight pound test, 10 pound test on your drop shot. And that's what we're doing today is drop shotting. And this is a nice spot. You know, I'm having to take my time a little bit with it because it, it is such a light line. You just want to play them a little bit. But, oh man, check that out, guys. Not a bad spot of bass right there. And, you know, we're here in the western part of South Carolina. And, you know, there's this big misconception that, that fish don't bite as good this time of year because of that transition. You know, lakes are starting to turn over and the fishing's starting to get a lot tougher. But all you have to do is pick up something like a drop shot and catch some fish. Now, on a lake like, like Kiwi, like Hartwell, like Lanier, uh, some of these places that have all these herring in them, one thing you have to have at your availability at all times is a drop shot rig. Just a simple drop shot rig. We have it nose hooked with a little four and a half inch worm. Nothing too crazy. But the reason you have to have this, so I started out with a, a soft plastic jerkbait like a fluke and a topwater. These fish are chasing herring all over, but when they get really pressured, or let's just say for instance, they get inactive, and you can watch your active target, you can see how the fish position. If they're sitting really high in the water column, that's when you wanna throw your flukes, your topwaters, things like that. But when they get sink down to the bottom, like they are today, that's when you pick up a drop shot, a shaky head, a jig. In this case, I just always tend to go to the, the drop shot, it's just so consistent. I tend to get a lot of really good bites on it. And here at Kiwi, it's definitely one of those baits that you gotta have in your arsenal to catch your fish. But I'm gonna tell you guys, the fish are biting and I can't wait to get back out there. So I'm gonna go drop me in down a little bit more, see if I can catch me another one. There. Here they come. There we go. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh my God, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, they all pulled over here. There it comes. There we go. There we go. That's a nice spot there. Oh man, that's one thing about when you get around these herring fish, they're bigger than usual. And this one is one of those. Golly, man, he destroyed that caffeine chad. I think I barely have him hooked though. Man, oh man. Let's see here, there we go. Check out the size of that spot, guys. Now that's the kind that we are looking for here at Lake Kiwi. 
check it out my goodness just a nice spotted bass got him hooked perfect so that pearl white caffeine shad big bass i mean guys it don't get much better than that right there get this fish back real quick let me tell you real quick when you're on these herring lakes it's so important to pay attention to your active target. So I've been out here, I've been drop shotting, I've been catching a lot of bass today. I mean, just a bunch. And I look out there at my active target, and what did I tell y'all earlier? You have to pay attention to the depth of which the fish are sitting. I see a school of fish swimming about five foot under the surface. That's when you wanna get the caffeine shad or top water. It just kinda depends on how the fish are biting uh, today. You know, when you get on a place like this, the caffeine chat just so deadly. Um, and just rigging it with a straight shank hook and a little swivel in the front to get a little bit more depth. But the deal is with the caffeine chat, it's all about having the right presentation. So one thing about it, what I like to do, throw it on a spinning rod, you throw your cast out there and you're reeling it and you're twitching it, you're reeling it and twitching it. That's the way these herring react in the water. So you have to match it. It's not just sitting there twitching it real slow and going real slow. You have to fish fast. And when you see them coming on that active target, you don't slow down, you just keep going. And then they're gonna bite it. I mean, that right there, I actually hooked one on my first cast. It was a really nice bass. I saw the school had moved towards me, paid attention. I just flipped my caffeine shad to where the school was. I saw them resurface and of course they ate it as soon as I threw it. So, but here in a minute, we're gonna talk about color and why it's so important. But I'm gonna tell you guys, I gotta throw it back out there and see if I can catch me another one. Just went down with it, but he wasn't very active. Oh, we got it though. Here we go. Oh my gosh. My gosh. That's a large mouth. You see how high that fish just jumped? Holy cow. That's very interesting. So I was looking at my active target there and he was sitting out there by himself. And it's really interesting because these spots are all kind of schooled up together. And uh, you just never know what you're gonna catch. Actually, for a second, I thought I had a small mouth as high as that fish just jumped. And I was like, I don't think they got small mouth here. There we go. Not a bad little largemouth. So right now we've already hit both species of fish. Drop that drop shot down there. As soon as it hit the bottom, fish ate it. Four pound line. We're here at Lake Kiwi though. You know, I'm gonna tell you, this probably won't be my last trip to Lake Kiwi. This place is kind of cool. I think I've made like two moves today already and already been catching some really nice bass. Has a lot of nice fish in it. You know, the only bad thing about throwing four pound line, see my hook here, well, you don't see a drop shot weight. My drop shot weight broke off. When you're throwing that really light line, the fish have a tendency to throw your weight. So uh, that's one thing about it for sure. But throwing a really small little worm, just throwing a little four inch worm, nothing too special. We've actually mixed up colors. And that's one thing I wanna to talk to you about is color. When it comes to, to picking your drop shot worm, when you come out here to South Carolina, Lake Kiwi, uh, Lake Hartwell, Murray, you know, there's about three colors of worms that you really, really need to have. You need to have a pink worm. Everybody gonna talk to you about uh, morning dawn is the color. You wanna have a pink worm. You wanna have a shad color. And I, when I say shad color, I'm not saying a white worm. More of like a transparent type shad color, like a prism shad, something like that. Or a green pumpkin. And literally guys, y'all can take those three worms rig them on a drop shot and day in and day out at this body of water and all across this area, if you throw those three colors, you're gonna find success. You're gonna catch a lot of bass. You're gonna have a lot of fun. And today we're using a little four pound test, fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon, the new Hyper Mag spinning reel. And, and just really just having some fun out here. And, that, and that's what fishing's supposed to all be about, right? I mean, we're supposed to come out here and have a good time, catch some bass, have some fun with your friends and have some fun with your family. And there's nothing better than catching some nice bass on four pound test here in South Carolina and what's supposed to be the toughest time of the year, but it's not. We're gonna catch some more bass here in just a second. There we go.
Another nice spot on the drop shot. No, it's a yeah, it's a spot. That was a largemouth for a second. God, it's another nice one. We have the fire. We have these fish fired up right now. We got them chasing caffeine shads, eating drop shots. It's just, just an unbelievable time here at Kiwi. You know, like I said earlier, I've never been in this body of water before, but. You know, what I wanted to do today was to prove to y'all guys that you can go to a body of water you've never been to before and use a lot of the same tactics. So, you know, one thing I did is I got on the internet and I and I, all I did was some simple research, you know, like a simple Google search of what type of forage was in this body of water. And I found out it had herring like Hartwell and some of these others. And I knew immediately that I'd be able to catch some really nice fish fishing the, the way that I like to fish for herring, you know, throwing a caffeine shad, throwing a drop shot. And it honestly hasn't really disappointed me. I mean, there's a lot of really nice fish here. And you shouldn't be scared to go to a new body of water and try something different from time to time because you're gonna be surprised how many fish you catch. You know, here, when you're drop shotting, you gotta really pay attention to the how you have to present your bait. So unlike a lot of other places, you know, like at Hartwell, every place is a little different. The fish are all gonna react a little bit different everywhere you go. So one thing that I did as soon as I got here, I started fishing the way that I was catching them at Hartwell. And then the way I was catching them at Hartwell is I would make my cast out there and I would just hold my drop shot still. So I would just dead stick the worm. And that was how I was actually catching the majority of my fish. As I was dead sticking it, I'd get it in where the fish were and just hold it still. Well, when I got here, I tried that and the fish didn't seem to bite it as good. So that's when I started shaking it. I did a light shake at first, nothing. Um, I think I caught one. And then like instinctively, I just kind of started shaking it hard, like really hard, like old school Aaron Martin shaking a worm brass and glass days. And you, if you don't know anything about that, you should definitely Google that. Aaron Martin's was one of those pioneer kind of guys that that really you know revolutionized finesse fishing for the you know the united states and one technique that he used to use was brass and glass so it was a brass sinker a glass bead and a worm and what he'd do is he'd get over there and shake it shake it real hard and it, it would make that clacking sound well then when the drop shot came out he started using the drop shot and he would use the same technique that he would use with the brass and glass but he wasn't using you know the weight and the the clacker so now all he does is shake that worm you know, and Aaron unfortunately passed way too soon. But, you know, one thing that he definitely did is revolutionize how drop shot fishing is. And, and I've really tried to carry on his, his uh, legacy by using it as much as I can. And he definitely opened my eyes to how you fish it. And so today, and, and what you should do if you fish a drop shot is always change up your, the way you rig your worms, change up your colors, change up the way you shake your worm. If you don't shake it at all, make cast with it, drop it under the boat. You know, that's the cool thing about a drop shot is you can do it a bunch of different ways and you can catch a bunch of different fish on it. So, uh, you know, that's one thing to always keep in the back of your mind. If you're not catching them quite as good as you think you should, change the way you fish it and you will be shocked how many extra bass you catch. Hit it again. Oh, that's not a little one. Oh, there we go. Oh, man. Whoo. There we go. Man, oh, man. Dude, this place is, might be one of my favorite places around. This place has some dang bass in it now. Holy cow. You know, I've always been a huge fan of Hartwell, Merck. Murray and other places, but let me tell you, I just broke the fish off. Probably over three pounds. I'm sad. It happens sometimes, but let me tell you something real quick though. Paying attention to the color of soft plastic jerk bait that you're throwing is extremely important. Maybe one of the most important things that you can do when you're out here throwing it, especially trying to attract these fish that are eating herring. So as you can tell, it's still pretty low light. It's morning time, probably around that nine to 10 o'clock time frame. And I'm throwing that solid white, or what you would consider pearl, uh, caffeine shad. 
Well, as the sun gets higher, as there's more light penetration on this calm day, you're gonna have to go to a more natural approach as the day progresses. And what that means is going to like uh, maybe a glacier color, which is a more transparent color, or even going to uh, our white ice, which has a white back and a clear belly. And having those couple of different colors and changing it up from time to time. You can't get stuck on throwing the exact same thing all the time because if you do, you're gonna miss a lot of extra bites. So pay attention, mix up your colors, and I promise you, when you get out here, you're gonna have better results. Now granted, in this situation, I lost a really nice one, just kinda how it goes sometimes, throwing light line, eight pound test. You don't have to always go to eight, you can go to 10, 12, things like that. Um, but in this situation, the water's gin clear, you know, talking about six to eight foot visibility, I wanted to go a little bit lighter line in that, and I felt like it made a bigger difference. So, guys, Kiwi, that's where it's at. I'm gonna rig back up and see if I can catch me another one. There we go. God, you smoked that thing. Whew. Man. What a day today has been. Just smoking on them, on a caffeine shed and a drop shot. Just a bunch of fish, man. Just, this place is just cr incredible. Another nice one on the caffeine shed. Check that out, guys. Right in the top of the mouth, right where you want them to be. And using the active target. And, I mean, look how fat that fish is. But picking the right colors is really, really important. And that's that's one thing that we're doing here. That white caffeine shad just really seems to draw them out. But real fast, we're gonna show you exactly what we're looking at here on Active Target to make these fish react. And, and maybe you're gonna learn something here and help you catch some fish. So join me right up here and let's look at it. All right, if you can see right here, we've got, this is a cane pile. And there's bass here, here, and all around this. And if you see when I move my trolling motor, there's none there to the left, and I move right back to the right, and that's where they're at. Now watch this. So I'm gonna cast my bait out there. I'm gonna cast my bait out there, and my bait's right here, okay? And these fish, the thing about these, these fish is it's all about speed. So you wanna, whenever you get over them, you gotta speed up. So I've got them chasing it right now. They're, they're schooling towards the top after it. They're right behind it. Oh my gosh. Oh, my drag's way too loose. <laughs> there we go. Golly. This is fun. They're all sharking behind it. Not a big one. Guy's just spitting out. Oh, he's, oh, that's a perfect example of what these fish are eating. So I was actually talking to my cameraman about it earlier. You know, everybody gets the misconception that these fish are just always gouging on herring. And even me sometimes, especially when they eat herring baits like they are today, gives this fish back real quick. Even me sometimes, I, I, you get so caught up with it, you think they're eating herring the whole time. But look at the size of this minnow right here. It's a little small, about two inch thread fin shad. And that's actually what these fish on this particular spot are eating. And so often guys get so caught up saying, okay, these are herring eating fish. But in reality, they're eating these little thread fins and paying attention to those little things. So if, for instance, these fish stop biting and if I stop catching fish, all I would have to do would be downsize a little bit, go to a smaller bait like a 2.75 inch rage swimmer, a small sexy dog, or even a popper, and you probably catch a lot of fish even when they're not biting. So keeping an open mind, always being ready and paying attention to those little bitty details because nature's always gonna give you little details. And we're on a super calm day here at Kiwi. It showed me right there they're eating small bait, and I know they're eating my caffeine shad. Whew, man, doo, 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 doo. so much fun. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's a nice one. Golly. Man, oh man, this place is a very, very special place. I might actually get in trouble uh, by the locals here because I um, might be exposing it a little bit too much because um, this is a really nice bass here and what's crazy is the one I had on earlier was way bigger 
Look at the size of this spot of bass. Check that out, guys. Wow. Just choke that caffeine, Chad. You know you're throwing the right color when they're choking it like that. I've always believed that, especially on these schooling fish like this. I ate my tail off of it and everything. But a nice, nice bass. Guys, today has been just one of those magical, magical days here fishing for spotted bass in South Carolina. Lake Kiwi has shown out. It's definitely a place that I will 1000% come back to. It has such a healthy population of bass. And I mean, just a lot of really nice fish. Overall, an unreal trip, throwing a two prong approach. And, and typically if you watch my show, you watch Let's Fish TV, you know I'm all about the two prong approaches. The drop shot and the caffeine shad today were lights out. Uh, I didn't even need another rod in the deck and I have all of them on here. But those two rods got it done for me today. Let's get this fish back real fast. There she goes. Overall guys, Lake Kiwi, western part of South Carolina, is definitely a place that I will bring my family to. It's just a beautiful lake as it is. It's a little bit cooler, a little bit more in the mountains, but obviously has a great, great group of bass in it. And you know, I mean, it, from what I've been told, I mean, it has some giant largemouth in it. We caught a few largemouth today, not any of the really big ones, but had some opportunities at some really big spotted bass. And I mean, overall, man, like throwing the caffeine shad, and rigging it the way that I was, I was able to utilize a little bit lighter line and catch a lot of these fish that were out here schooling. But, you know, using your active target, paying attention with your active target to how the fish are reacting is a really big key out here. If they're sitting high, use the moving bait. If they're sitting low, use the drop shot. And utilizing both techniques to catch a great number of bass. So let's head back to the ramp. Let's get everything rigged back up. I've got a tournament tomorrow. So I've got to get everything ready for Hartwell, but I hope y'all enjoyed today's show.